13.7 billion years ago, it all began with an explosion. Everything, including time, was born in the split of a second. Time as we know it today is measured with a system developed by the Sumerians, later used by the Babylonians. This is a sexagesimal system, which basis is 60. But where does this come from? It is possible to count up to 12 by using just one hand. The thumb is pointing at each section on a finger, and there are three sections to each finger. Four times three is 12, and that makes a dozen, and the other hand can count in dozens. One, two, three, four, 5 times 12 is 60. But it's not the only thing that makes 60 such a special number. It has 12 factors, and this is a smallish number which can be divided by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6, with no fractions left. We use this system to measure time, angles and geographical coordinates. The earliest timekeeping devices were reliant on the sun. Egyptians divided the day into 14 parts. 10 daytime parts, 4 twilight parts, 2 in the morning and 2 in the evening. And with a shadow clock they could keep trace of time quite precisely. However, these clocks were useless on overcast days and at night. The first implements that did not rely on celestial clues were the water clocks. The earliest description of a water clock came from an Egyptian pharaoh. Although it only measured hours, water clocks were still the best solution yet. Plato, the famous Greek philosopher, created the first alarm clock by developing a water clock. As the water built up in a jar, it blew a whistle that woke him up. Because water freezes at 0 degrees Celsius, later it has been replaced by mercury, which freezing point is minus 38 degrees Celsius. In 520, the Chinese poem by Yu Yanafu mentioned a clock, which was a candle capable of measuring time at night. King Alfred the Great, who lived in the 9th century, used a special device with six candles. Each were 12 inches high and made from 72 penny weights of wax and was able to burn for up to four hours. Therefore, every inch represented 20 minutes and six candles lasted for 24 hours. Although the origin of the hourglass is unclear, it is believed that they were introduced to Europe by a monk called Lupand. Some believe that the Egyptians were the inventors of the hourglass. But one thing is for sure, it has been used on medieval ships for navigational purposes. For example, in 1522, when Magellan travelled around the globe, he had 18 hourglasses on his ship. In Europe, the first clockmakers were Christian monks. A man who is known as Pope Sylvester II built the first clock in the 11th century. These timekeeping inventions became very popular around the 14th century, and they were mainly used in churches and cathedrals. Galileo Galilei was the father of science, and he invented the telescope and also discovered the moons of Jupiter. And he contributed a lot to the evolution of the timekeeping devices with his experiments on the pendulum. He realized that the regular swing of a pendulum can be used to regulate a clock. It took 50 years before finally the first pendulum clock was built by a Dutch mathematician. This was a giant leap in the precision of timekeeping devices.
The first pocket watch was invented by a German locksmith. It still hasn't got a minute dial, as the accuracy of this watch was around 30 minutes per day. But it was portable. What is a pendulum for a clock is the balance spring for a pocket watch. This invention belongs to the same man who built the pendulum clock. The balance spring made them accurate to within five minutes per day. This was the dawn of the accurate timekeeping and the revolution of the watchmaking industry. In 1904, a Brazilian aviator asked the famous watchmaker Cartier to make him a wristwatch. A few years later, the First World War came and it changed everything. Aviators and soldiers were the first men who wore wristwatches, simply because it was more convenient to look at a wristwatch rather than take out a pocket watch during a battle. Quartz crystals and its piezoelectric ability made possible to create the most accurate timekeeping devices in the 1930s. But how does it work? When a quartz crystal is exposed to electrical charge, it resonates at a certain frequency. This is more than 30,000 times per second. The electrical circuit measures the quartz frequency and controls a motor which drives the gears to the hand. Up until this point, quartz was the most precise timekeeping option. However, Nearly 40 years later, the first atomic clock has been built and a new time standard has been set up. But what is an atomic clock and why is it so precise? The atomic clock uses the cesium atom to measure time and in 1967, it was formally recognized as the new international unit of time. One second was defined as 9,192,631,750 oscillations of the cesium's atom resonant frequency. These special clocks can keep an accuracy within a second in a few million years' time. So, do you know what time it is?